All right. In our second screencast on um, the light reactions, we're going to get into the nitty gritty of how the light reactions actually function. Okay. So light reactions part two. So um, first we talked about um, the nature of light, how it works, how chlorophyll works, how a pigment is a light absorbing molecule. And now we're really going to look at exactly how the chemical, the um, light energy is transformed into chemical energy uh, by chlorophyll. So chlorophyll is um, present in a complex called a photosystem. And a photosystem is a reaction center complex associated with light harvesting complex. So there's kind of two main parts to the photosystem. Okay. So the photosystem has a reaction center, um, <clears throat> which is um, in the middle, and it contains some very special chlorophyll. And we'll look at a, a, a figure in just a minute. And then the light harvesting complexes, which are pigment molecules, um, <clears throat> they uh, capture the energy of light um, but, uh, via photons and transfer that energy to the reaction center. And then the reaction center transfers that energy to electrons, and then the electrons move down through the light reactions and um, synthesize ATP and then ADPH, um, and then the energy is stored in glucose. So here's a picture of a photosystem. So this is present in the thylakoid membrane. So don't forget about your chloroplast anatomy, so membrane of the thylakoid. This is the interior of the thylakoid, and this is the exterior of the thylakoid, which is the stroma. So here's my reaction center. So you have your reaction center complex, which is this central portion here. And then the light harvesting complexes, okay, which is what kind of wraps these purple things that wrap around the outside. The light harvesting complexes contain uh, pigment molecules, which are these green things because they're chlorophyll. And then the reaction center contains a very special pair of chlorophyll A molecules. And we're going to look at um, the reaction center chlorophylls are very specific in the different types of photosystems we're going to look at. So basically what happens is a photon of light comes in. It hits the um, pigment molecules, the light harvesting complexes. Um, these resonate, okay, which means they start to vibrate and they transfer their vibrations to each other and end by resonating the special pair of chlorophyll in the reaction center. That excites an electron in the reaction center, and that electron is accepted by our primary electron acceptor. Okay, so that's kind of in general how a photosystem works, and we're gonna look a little bit more about the types of photosystems and then get into the details of the light reactions. So the primary electron acceptor in the reaction center um, accepts excited electrons and then therefore is reduced. Um, and this is the first step of the light reactions to transfer um, the energy from light to chlorophyll to the primary electron acceptor. Um, there are two main types of photosystem found in the thylakoid membrane. Um, the first one is photosystem two. Photosystem two functions first. It's called photosystem two because it was discovered second, but it functions first in the light reactions. Um, and those special chlorophylls in the reaction center, um, they best absorb at a wavelength of 680 nanometers. And because of this, the reaction center chlorophyll um, in photosystem two is called P680. The other photosystem is photosystem one. It was discovered first. Um, and it has a, a chlorophyll in the reaction center that absorbs best at 700 nanometers. And so the reaction center of PS1 is called P700. So now let's look at the light reactions. And um, we're going to look at two main types of um, electron flow. The primary one for plants is called linear electron flow. And this is most commonly used in plants. So uh, there is another possible way. So linear is one way, cyclic is another way. Um, so, but we're gonna look at linear first, 
um, and then we'll look at cyclic at the end. So linear electron flow involves both photosystem 2 and photosystem 1 and produces ATP and NADPH using the energy from light. So we're going to go through the steps now, step by step, and there'll be a little slide and then a picture, then a slide, then a picture, and hopefully we'll walk you through. So uh, first step, a photon hits a pigment um, and the energy in the photon is passed among the pigment molecules until it excites the P680, and this is happening in photosystem 2. Then an excited electron from P680 is transferred to the primary electron acceptor. Okay, so here is my photon of light coming in. It hits these pigment molecules, transfers energy up to P680 in the reaction center. And again, this is occurring in photosystem 2. That excites the electron, and it goes up to the primary electron acceptor. So once P680+, plus, which is with um, uh, P680 now without its electron, um, it's a very strong oxidizing agent. So in order to replace the electrons in P680 that it lost, we're going to split water. So water is split by enzymes. The electrons transferred to P680+, plus and reduce it back to P680. So it replenishes um, the electrons lost by P680. And again, oxygen is released as a byproduct of this reaction, the splitting of water. So again, light comes in, excites the chlorophyll, P680 donates its electrons up here, and then water is split. The, uh, the electrons released replenish the electrons in P680, and as a byproduct, we lose water and some hydrogen ions, okay? And again, this if you think about the last step of cellular respiration, oxygen was our, our terminal electron acceptor. Oxygen was accepting electrons and being changed into water. And here, the first step of photosynthesis, we are splitting water it's giving up its electrons to P680 and generating some oxygen. Now the electrons in the primary electron um, acceptor will fall down an electron transport chain that goes from the primary electron acceptor of PS2 down to PS1. As the electron goes down the electron transport chain, energy is released and that energy is used to create a proton gradient, just like the electron transport chain in cellular respiration. Okay. Then, once you have a gradient, the diffusion of protons across the membrane through ATP synthase um, will drive the synthesis of ATP. Okay. So, we've got our light coming in, resonating the pigment molecules, exciting P680, donates an electron to primary electron acceptor. Then that electron gets passed down the electron transport chain. As it does, it creates a gradient of hydrogen ions. Okay. And then that drives the synthesis of ATP through ATP synthase. Okay. Um, and again, those um, electrons are replenished by the splitting of water. So now we're in PS1, um, like PS2, and the electrons that we just got from the electron transport chain um, are, have low energy. So they need to be re-energized. Um, so you get some more light energy, um, and now our reaction center is P700. Um, gets energized by the light energy. This will um, donate an electron to an electron acceptor. <clears throat> and then they accept um, electrons passed down from PS2 via the electron transport chain. So here we have light here, exciting chlorophyll. Then the reaction center um, gets the energy transfer 
it excites an electron. The electron is accepted by the primary electron acceptor. And then those electrons are replenished by the electrons coming off the electron transport chain. Okay, so in PS2, the electrons are replenished by splitting water. In PS1, the electrons are replenished uh, in P700 by accepting electrons from the electron transport chain. So um, now, let's go back. So now we are here with our electrons at our primary acceptor in PS1. They fall down a second electron transport chain, okay, um, and end up in the protein ferredoxin, okay. And then at this point, the electrons are transferred to our electron acceptor, NADP+, and it's reduced to NADPH, okay. Now those electrons are carried in NADPH to the Calvin cycle, okay. So we here, we were here with our um, high energy electrons. They go down the electron transport chain, and then the electrons uh, reduce NADP to NADPH. So over the course of the light reactions, we've made ATP and NADPH. That's where our energy originally came from the sun. Okay, is transferred to high energy electrons. And those high energy electrons are used to synthesize ATP and NADPH. And then they carry the energy to the Calvin cycle. Okay. And then this just kind of summarizes the energy. <clears throat> you have a photon, it excites an electron. The electron uh, uses its energy to make ATP. Photon re-excites the electron. The electron is used to make NADPH. Okay? And then those products go to fuel the Calvin cycle. So that was linear electron flow. Cyclic electron flow uses only photosystem 1. It produces ATP, but not NADPH. Okay? It does not split water. No oxygen is released. And cyclic electron flow generates surplus ATP, okay? Um, the Calvin cycle demands a lot of ATP, and cyclic electron flow can generate a surplus of ATP. So cyclic electron flow only involves photosystem 1. So basically, once the uh, electrons are excited by light, the primary acceptor donates them back to the electron transport chain over here, and then that is used to make ATP. Then the, ener the electrons replenish the re uh, reaction center P700 and just keep kind of going around and around and around. Okay, so cyclic electron flow is much more common in bacteria. Okay, and bacteria only have photosystem one. Um, so uh, cyclic electron flow is thought to have evolved before linear electron flow. Okay. All right, um, so let's quickly look at chemiosmosis, so the electron transport chain um, and ATP synthase in the chloroplast and in the mitochondria. So chloroplast v mitochondria. So chloroplast, again, remember, is our photosynthesis. So we're looking at the chemiosmosis and the light reactions. Mitochondria, cellular respiration, okay, light reaction, oh, sorry, um, electron transport chain in mitochondria. Um, so they both generate ATP by chemiosmosis, but they use different sources of energy, okay? Mitochondria use the chemical energy from food, okay, and transfer that to ATP. Chloroplasts transform light energy into the chemical energy of ATP, okay? Um, if you look at the spatial organization of chemiosmosis, but uh, it's, it's different, but it has similarities. So... In mitochondria, protons are pumped from the matrix into the inner membrane space. Okay. In chloroplasts, pro protons are pumped from the stroma into st 
T-R-O-M-A, into the thylakoid space. And you'll see they're always pumped into a space. So from the matrix into the inner membrane space or from the stroma into the thylakoid space. So the um, gradient is always created high in the space and low in the fluid of the matrix of the stroma. So if you look here, if you look, the dark gray is high electron concentration, the lighter gray is a lower electron concentration. So if you look, in mitochondria, the inner membrane space has a high concentration. If you look in chloroplast, the thylakoid space has a high concentration. Okay, and then of course, um, the protons uh, from the gradient diffuse through ATP synthase. ATP synthase works exactly the same in both um, processes. And then ATP is synthesized in the stroma for chloroplasts and ATP is synthesized in the matrix for um, uh, mitochondria. Okay, um, ATP and NADPH are both um, produced in the stroma and that's convenient because they need to go to the Calvin cycle and the stroma is where the Calvin cycle takes place. So again to sum up, light reactions generate ATP and NADPH which then both go to the Calvin cycle to power the synthesis of glucose, and they get their high energy electrons from splitting water. Okay, so here again you can see it's the spatial organization of here's my light reactions, and then here's my chemiosmosis. Okay, so light reactions, light photosystem one energizes electrons that then are used <clears throat> to create a gradient. And then photosystem two energizes electrons that are used to um, reduce NADP plus to NADPH. The gradient is then used to make ATP and both ATP and NADPH go to the Calvin cycle. And that's it for the light reactions. And our last screencast in this chapter will be on the Calvin cycle.